Welcome to another episode of Sailing the Recipe. I'm Colin and this is my wife Bex. And together with my three daughters, we put our Mission Star restaurant on hold during COVID to live a life on a sailboat. Meet our new floating home, The Recipe. We're on a journey of a lifetime to discover new places, new cultures and new people, as well as exploring what the world has to offer under the sea. Hit that subscribe button to follow our journey every Sunday and see where our recipe takes us next. So finally we have some good news. Um, our passports have arrived to the from the US Embassy to an express delivery. So we're gonna go pick them up and hopefully in the passports will be a United States visa because that's what we need to get to Miami. So fingers crossed, we're just waiting for a cab at the moment. Left the boat on anchor and all three of us are headed out to get our visas. Fingers crossed they are there. So these are my extra baggage with BA. This is the third one. I'm just packing up the Lexus and uh, getting ready to head back to recipe. Okay, this is the, um, yeah, but there's another big suitcase full of stuff as well. She hasn't packed her own stuff. Hold on, beautiful day. I can't see the thing. Um, there she is outside, packing up the go. Lexus. You can see in here. There's two more. And there's another one in here. And we're going to the boot now. <laughs> there we go. And this one's going in the other side at the back. Oh, right. Get That's... me through the uh, door, Monday. Oh, right. Hold on. So I think just about enough room in the car for... Uh... It's only me and Emily. Emily, hold on. But... So there's all the luggage coming back, Colin. Most of these. That's my KitchenAid. My Christmas present from Colin. It's bloody heavy. This one is my ninja and loads of lights for the boat and this one is loads of books <laughs> all the girls education Woohoo! we're ready so they're off tomorrow night we'll photograph you because we are going to have drinks with the warbies here and the parishes huh. and so there we go we're looking good okay <laughs> bye darling <laughs> My sister, her last note to me today was, I'm glad you're leaving. You've been having too much fun with my parents. Bye-bye. <laughs> Au revoir. Let's have a look, let's have a look. Woo! We're off to... The States, man. The States, welcome to Miami. Miami, Miami. Okay, let's go. Let's get, let's get back to the boat. Let's get back to the boat. You walk too slow. Bahamas we checked out this morning we're just gonna uh, spend the day walking along the beach remembering the uh, Bahaman water as uh, we're going to Miami next where it won't be so crystal clear but it's still Miami um, it's sad to leave Bahamas we are sad to leave the Bahamas as we didn't get to um, explore, as explore as much as we wanted to but all good things have to come to an end I was enjoying my Olly Murs, thank you very much. Um, well, my mum is not here to cook, so I'm cooking. What about your daddy? He's 
he's a chef and all, but he, he cooks too fancy stuff. Me and Jess, you know, we're still kids. We we like the we like the um, non fancy stuff. And I've had said non fancy. What are you doing? You're doing homemade sh uh, doing coleslaw with roasted butternut squash and a shoulder of lamb. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not fancy then, yeah. <laughs> yes. She's all wet because she's been to the water. She's been for a walk. Yes, you have. <laughs> Woo, it smells good in here. Um, so I'm doing lamb shoulder with butternut squash, cabbage and carrot on top. Ooh. Yeah. Like a lamb cutlet, is it? Looking good, Lou. Looking good. Not bad for a chef's daughter, huh? So what's this? This is white cabbage, butternut squash, garlic onions. Nice. Cover the whole thing this way. Now, no lying, rate it out of 10. Very good, Lou. Seven. Seven out of 10. Woo! <laughs> Highest I've ever gotten before. <laughs> That's saying a lot. <laughs> I normally get a four. <laughs> yes, I know. We're all looking a bit rough. It's stupid o'clock in the morning. It's six o'clock and um, it is flat calm. It's flat calm. Um, after the thunderstorm last night, my God, was it thunder and lightning? I thought it was. I thought it was just on top of my bedroom last night. It was really loud. Um, a little bit scary, to be honest. Never had something so close on my boat. I'm sure I was going to get a lightning strike. Poor old boat over there, starting to drag onto some rocks. And um, so yeah, it was a little bit, a little bit weary. It's quite a spooky morning, I've got to say. It's a bit overcast. Calm. Not a drop of wind, which is okay because I wanted to get to Miami uh, a quite a peaceful thing. I know the wind's going to pick up later on this afternoon, so I'm going to get out of here. So I'm trying to get the kids up. No day, sky crashes into the sea, holding everything in place. What falls apart starts coming back together. Stars burn out and become new Can't predict what people do But I'm still holding on to you I'm still holding on to you All the days we colored blue I'd go anywhere with you And if the world stops spinning too So although it looks quite cold and miserable, it's, uh, it's quite warm and humid and the seas have been very kind to us. For any sailor who knows this passage can be quite treacherous. Um, if you get it wrong, it can be the most painful experience on a boat you can imagine. Um, if you are going against the current and against the wind, the size of chop you can have is incredible. So lucky enough, we've chosen a day with um, very quiet winds. We'd prefer to almost motor than get caught out in a most um, terrible experience on the seas. So actually the water is so calm, there's hardly any friction for us. So we are zipping through the water. Um, we're doing 2000 RPM on both engines and um, we're doing about, well, normally that would give us about eight knots, but we're doing nine and a half knots because we're picking up some of the current. As we get closer to Florida, the current will get slightly stronger, but this time of year, it's probably only about three to four knots anyway. So hopefully um, 
we'll be there sooner rather than later. We were predicting nine hours, which we now think will be six hours. So I think we should be there just after lunch. Um, the only problem we've got now is that Miami is notoriously bad for well, space. Anchoring is very limited. Uh, I've phoned up many of the marinas. Many of them are full, so I can't get a space. And uh, any ones that do have space, it costs a fortune. It's like $8 per foot, which is eye-wateringly expensive. For me, it's going to be like 400 euros, uh, $400, sorry, uh, a night, which is just impossible. So um, I've got to kind of see what we do when we get there. I've got to call up the customs office and uh, start the whole rigmarole of checking in, which again is a bit of a, a ball ache with COVID, etc. But anyway, very peaceful sail. It could have been a lot worse, but um, the seas have been good to us. I'm going to Miami. Welcome to Miami. So we thought this journey would be quite slow. We thought we were going to do six knots, but we're flying at nine and a half. Why is that? Because of the off stream. We're flying! We're going to Miami! <laughs> so we're just talking about Olivia can't see the land ahoy! We can all see it, but she can't see it. Finally, we've got sight. I think Olivia's eyesight is bad. We need to go to an optician. I think they're just joking with me. I don't think they can see it because I can just see clouds. I can't see no buildings. Well, they're there. You are joking, right? I'm not. How could you see that? The question is, how come you not? Yeah, we're 10 anyway, miles out. Look at that. The wind's blowing 10 knots and we're doing 10 knots of speed. Thank you, Gulfstream. So now we just have to wait 15 minutes for this bridge to open. It opens um, on the hour and every half hour. So 15 minutes to go and then we're going to go through. Captain Jess is taking us through. Sterling job. Made it to Miami, United States of America, man. Woo. Tell you what, my brain is fried. It was, it was a good Very tick nice. in the box. Um, we exciting. Yeah, it was exciting. It was great seeing the uh, skyscrapers come into view on the horizon, seeing the skyline. But we didn't. We haven't really seen sky, skyscrapers like this in a while because in the med there aren't many sky, sky, skyscrapers. I can't Not speak today. We. Um, uh, my highlight. I enjoyed coming through the bridge. It was. Uh, it's different because once you're through the bridge, you're in like a big bustling city and. I think this is the first time I've been in a big bustling city. I mean the med. The med, it's busy, but it's not 
covered in skyscrapers like this. These houses are huge as well. They're just yeah, all made of glass and all different colours. It's actually quite pretty, but the water, water is yeah. water's a little bit dodgy. It's not. It's not. It's not the best. <laughs> but not it's um, it's cool coming I mean, to this from six we've hours just ago. Come back. We're, six yeah. hours ago, we were in Bimini, and the water was crystal clear, and it was just a few beach shacks, shacks on, yeah. on the scene. Then we've got water. Manky. Like this, you can't even see your feet. Your bo um, the bottom. But yeah. There's huge houses everywhere. Massive contrast to six hours ago. And it was actually quite difficult um, anchoring because there's so many other boats. It was cool sailing through the Gulf Stream as well. Oh yeah. I, we were uh, hitting like 10 knots with the current with yeah. only one sail. Even when we were in Antigua, we would talk about sailing the Gulf Stream and I would always wonder like, Ooh, what's our speed going to be with the current added as well and the current just the speed of the current was five knots so we were doing a good solid 10 knots it was pretty cool pretty cool with to 10 experience. knots of wind with 10 knots of wind pretty cool experience So the time has come. Tomorrow, um, finally, Bex arrives in, in, uh, in Miami. So we're so looking forward to it. It's been five weeks. We haven't seen them in ages. Um, it's quite surreal not seeing your soulmate in so many years. Of course, my middle daughter, Emily, uh, not been away from them for that kind of length of time, which is quite strangely difficult. Okay, so we are going to do some little chores, little errands, and then we're going to go to Walmart. Uh, we've heard it's huge, massive. So we're going to go to Walmart and get some uh, produce ready for Bex to come tomorrow morning. So um, that's what we're going to try and do. And um, hopefully we'll fit it all in here and we'll see what else we can get. biggest shop I've ever seen under a roof. It just goes on for miles and miles and miles. It's so big, I feel claustrophobic. I forget what I want. If I didn't have a list, I would be completely lost. It is huge. I mean, you want a TV? No problem. You want a washing machine? You want some sugar? You want some cashew nuts? Anything you want, it has. And the price is quite good as well. So when Bex comes tomorrow, we're going to do a nice big shop. Um, because I think she'll enjoy this actually. So I'm not going to do a big shop. I'm going to wait for her so we can do a bigger shop. This place is massive. 
like hike it's so easy to get lost in they have like four aisles just for dogs it's um quite big kind of quarter to seven in the morning i look at my phone and i've got kind of like 10 missed calls and loads of text messages which is never good first thing in the morning and uh, so I called Bex back and um, she's not coming anyway guys thank you very much for watching this episode really appreciate it if you'd like what we're doing please share please subscribe it helps us out a great deal and uh, leave us a comment we love to read the comments so um, Thanks for watching again and look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers guys.